Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson, episode two in our series, Peak Week for Wellness Competitors. And we're going to talk a little bit about your body type and how that may affect your peaking strategy. So um, I, I, I know we're going we're gonna to be a little bit overlapping in some of this, uh, Adam, but, but just for wellness specifically, let's, let's kind of talk about an extreme ectomorph versus endomorph versus people in the middle of that continuum. Uh, what do you have to watch for, for competitors who say, I really want to do wellness? Uh, n- number one, who, who kind of fits that mold perfectly for you in terms of natural structure on that phenotype scale? But then, you know, may, maybe how do we help, help women into those areas, even if they don't necessarily have the best structure? What would be our, our peaking strategy for them, even, even leading into peak week? Mm-hmm. I would say a uh, uh, mezzo is going to be typically a really good person. Um, when you look at um, Brazilian and Spanish genetics, Italian genetics, you do see a lot of those body types. And uh, those are the girls that are frankly winning these pro cards and uh, truly dominating the sport. Um, I'll also say, um, you know, I, I have an excellent wellness pro, Sierra Schaefer. She's um, a power lifter, um, German descent. Um, so um, a very, very dominant lower body, definitely a mezzo. Doesn't, doesn't lose weight too fast, but um, also doesn't gain it too fast either. Gains muscle relatively well, not the fastest I've ever seen, but definitely not the slowest. And, uh, you know, we're able to take her multiple different directions. You know, we can, we can grow the lower half more easily and, uh, we can also bring our body fat back down when needed. So, so by um, the classic definition of an ectomorph, meaning somebody who has perhaps a little bit longer limb length. And so there's, there's more skeleton to cover with muscle. They don't typically have as as round billowing, you know, muscle bellies as, as another competitor. So some of these competitors do well, they can build enough muscle, their strength, of course, is getting lean enough. But but if you know, a a female is already struggling to gain a lot of muscle, can you say, hey, as an ectomorph, here's a strategy, we can still win in this? Or or do you think it's just too, too far out of the realm of criteria? I think when I think ectomorph, I just, the last thing I think of is the wellness competitor, (laughs) you know, and, uh, and, and I've really statistically in my head tried to think of anyone who just, even with some long-term power lifting, just even had the shape to the quads that were there. Um, And where I struggle with an endomorph is, you know, have I ever really seen an endo morph? Yeah, they have the shape and structure, but have I seen an endo get lean enough for the division? Um, this division is very precise. And uh, I, I want to say it's probably, it, it's funny because I see the most girls gravitating to do it, but I will say it's probably one of the least inclusive divisions because it just really requires that special body type. And I'll say it's um, just a little more inclusive than women's bodybuilding, but not much. <laughs> well, I'm glad you went to the other end with that ectomorph uh, fr- from ecto to endo and said, you know, hey, we really have to worry about them even retaining enough of their muscle as an endomorph to get lean enough. I mean, that that, that is always the challenge, but, but I think it could be a little bit more friendly on this side. I, I'm somebody who has that kind of a, a, a body type where, where I, I store body fat very evenly across my body. So it's not like I have striated glutes and still have 20 pounds to lose. I, I do sacrifice some leg size. And my very first wellness competitor uh, was similar in, in that she had that look in the off season, just, just massive, massive legs. By the time we were lean enough, and this goes to the very beginning, first couple of shows in this category, and um, you know, as, a, as an amateur, she, she won everything, won, won the novice, won the open, won her pro card. But it was because she did have that, that bikini type upper body, you know, a, enough shoulders, enough to, to, to be lean enough, see, see some definition in the abs, but still retain just enough size and shape in the quads and hams, almost had the, the kind of hints of separation of the, the glutes and hams that you want in bikini. But as you said earlier, Adam, just just not quite that lean. Very, 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 very close, but not quite. And and that was uh, you know pretty much a, a a great stunning first look for me at at the the division and, and the body types that were going to do well. 
Absolutely. I think one thing people really need to look at with this newer division is uh, really stop watching much of the regional shows because a lot of people are crossing over just to try this. And uh, I've seen people win overalls that just they're going to get smoked at nationals because it's not really what they're looking for. Um, so, you know, really look to the higher end to um, base your um, just uh, final thoughts on what this division actually looks like before you choose to go into this division. All right, well said. And in our third episode, guys, we're going to start going over the actual peaking options. So this entire series being peak week for wellness, we're going we're gonna to dig into some of the mechanics now. We'll see you next time in Contest Prep University.